Have you ever wondered about the life of the man who founded Symbolic Logic Giuseppe Pino? Born in the rustic farmhouse of Teto Galant, nestled five kilometers from Cuneo, Giuseppe's humble beginnings were far from ordinary. His parents, diligent farmers, nurtured his curious mind from a young age. His educational journey began in the village school of Spinetta, continued in Cuneo, and was marked by daily treks of five kilometers, a testament to his unyielding dedication. However, it was his move to Turin that truly marked the beginning of his intellectual adventure. Under the guidance of his uncle, a priest and lawyer based in Turin, Giuseppe was prepared for secondary schooling and university studies. This nurturing environment allowed Giuseppe's talents to flourish, setting him on a path that would change the way we understand logic and mathematics. Pino's journey to Turin set the stage for his groundbreaking work in mathematics and logic. Pino's university years were filled with knowledge from a variety of teachers and subjects. As he stepped into the University of Turin, his world expanded, immersing him in a sea of knowledge from the realms of analytic geometry to algebra. His first year at the university introduced him to Dovidio, a teacher who would play a significant role in shaping his mathematical foundations. In his second year Pino dove into the intricacies of calculus under the guidance of Angelo Ginocchi, and he also studied descriptive geometry with Giuseppe Bruno. His thirst for knowledge was insatiable, and it drove him to continue his exploration of pure mathematics into his third year, a path none of his peers chose to follow. They were drawn towards the engineering school, a direction Pino had once considered, but ultimately chose to abandon in his pursuit of the purest form of mathematics. During his third year, he was under the tutelage of Francesco Fadi Bruno, from whom he learned analysis, and Dovidio, who once again taught him geometry. His final year saw him learning from Dovidio and Francesco Siacci, who introduced him to mechanics. On the 29th of September in the year 1880, Pino graduated as a doctor of mathematics, marking the end of an educational journey that was just the beginning of his lifelong passion for mathematics. Pino's university years were not just about acquiring knowledge, they were about discovering himself, his passion, and his path in life. It was during these years that he found himself as the lone student continuing to study pure mathematics in his third year. This choice was not because of a lack of options, but because of his unwavering commitment to his passion. Pino's passion for mathematics went beyond the classroom. It influenced his choices, his career, and his future. It was a passion that was evident in his university years and that would continue to define him for the rest of his life. Pino's passion for pure mathematics was evident even during his university years. Pino's journey took a significant turn when he joined the University of Turin staff. In the year of 1880, the University of Turin welcomed a new member to its staff. Giuseppe Pino, fresh off his graduation, was appointed as an assistant to the esteemed Professor Davidio. This appointment marked the beginning of an illustrious career, one that would leave an indelible mark on the world of mathematics. Pino's tenure at the university was marked by his relentless pursuit of knowledge. His first mathematical paper published in the same year he joined the staff, was just the beginning of his prolific contributions to the field. However, it wasn't just his scholarly output that set him apart. It was his ability to question, to probe, and to challenge the established norms. The following year, Pino was appointed assistant to another luminary of the time, Angelo Ginocchi. This was a pivotal period for Pino, one that would define his approach to mathematics. It was during this time that he made a discovery that was typical of his style. He found an error in a standard definition. Pino was preparing to teach his students about the area of a curved surface when he realized that the definition in the standard text for the course was incorrect. This was no minor oversight. It was a fundamental error that had been overlooked by many before him. Without hesitation Pino brought this to the attention of Ginocchi who, as it turned out, was already aware of this discrepancy. This did not diminish the significance of Pino's discovery, rather it highlighted his keen eye for detail and his unwillingness to accept information at face value. This incident set the tone for Pino's future contributions. His meticulous approach, his ability to challenge established norms and his dedication to the pursuit of knowledge would continue to guide him throughout his career. His keen eye for detail led to his first major discovery, setting the tone for his future contributions. Pino's work in the field of infinitesimal calculus marked a significant milestone in his career. The year was 1884. A remarkable text emerged from the scholarly halls of Turin. 
a text that was to become a cornerstone in the vast edifice of infinitesimal calculus. Based on the lectures of Angelo Ginocchi, an eminent mathematician of the time, the text was not merely a transcription of Ginocchi's wisdom, but an embodiment of Pino's innovative thinking. Ginocchi's lectures, while insightful, were not without their flaws. Pino, with his keen mind and meticulous attention to detail, took upon the task of refining these lectures. He edited the text, infusing it with his own ideas, his own understanding. And thus the text was transformed from a mere transcript of Ginocchi's lectures into a comprehensive guide to infinitesimal calculus, bearing the unmistakable imprint of Pino's genius. The text was not merely a compilation of equations and mathematical principles, it was a testament to Pino's belief in the power of logical reasoning, his conviction that mathematics was not a rigid, unchanging discipline, but a vibrant, evolving field of study. His additions to the text were not mere corrections, but significant contributions that expanded the scope of infinitesimal calculus. However, the publication of this text was not without controversy. Ginocchi, perhaps taken aback by the extent of Pino's additions, expressed his discomfort. He stated that while the text bore his name, much of its content was the work of Pino. Yet this did not detract from the impact of the text. On the contrary, it highlighted Pino's contributions, underscoring his role in shaping the field of infinitesimal calculus. Pino's contributions to infinitesimal calculus were significant and laid the groundwork for his later achievements. His work was not confined to the realm of academia, it resonated throughout the world of mathematics, influencing generations of mathematicians and shaping the course of mathematical research. Pino's work in infinitesimal calculus was not just a chapter in his career, but a significant milestone in the history of mathematics. The legacy of Giuseppe Pino extends far beyond his lifetime, Giuseppe Pino was not just a mathematician but also a logician, a pioneer of a new mathematical era. His work in symbolic logic laid the foundation for a significant part of modern mathematics. Pino's axioms, a set of five postulates he proposed for the natural numbers, are still taught today, shaping the understanding of numbers for countless students worldwide. Pino's work was instrumental in formalizing mathematics. He was a champion of rigor, precision and clarity in mathematical writing. He believed in the power of symbols and logic to express mathematical truths in the most succinct and unambiguous way possible. This approach is now a staple of mathematical literature, ensuring that mathematical concepts are communicated with precision across languages and cultures. Pino's influence was not restricted to mathematics. His work in symbolic logic had a profound impact on the field of computer science. His idea of using symbols to represent logical operations is the foundation of Boolean algebra a mathematical structure that underlies all digital computing. But perhaps the most significant aspect of Pino's legacy is the spirit of innovation and discovery he embodied. He was not afraid to challenge the status quo to look at old problems with fresh eyes. He had a knack for spotting errors in established definitions, as he did with the definition of the area of a curved surface in his teaching years. This ability to question, to probe, to uncover the truth beneath layers of assumption is a trait that continues to inspire mathematicians and logicians today. In the grand tapestry of human knowledge, Giuseppe Pino wove a thread that was uniquely his own. His contributions have stood the test of time, and his influence continues to ripple through the ages. The life and work of Giuseppe Pino continue to inspire and influence mathematicians and logicians around the world. Giuseppe Pino's life was a testament to the power of curiosity and dedication. Born in a farmhouse in Cuneo, he was recognized as a gifted child and given the opportunity to pursue education in Turin. His journey was filled with dedication and resilience walking five kilometers to school every day. As he delved into the world of mathematics at the University of Turin, Pino's interest in the subject grew, leading him to specialize in pure mathematics. His contributions were significant, especially in the field of infinitesimal calculus. His keen eye for detail allowed him to spot an error in a standard definition a testament to his meticulous approach. Pino's work has left a lasting impact, and his legacy continues to influence the world of mathematics. His life serves as a beacon of inspiration, a reminder of the profound impact one person can have on the world of knowledge.